Okay, time to talk about Voltron, Defender of the Universe, specifically the Lion Force Voltron. So this was another item that Zernizerak talked me into um, investigating, so I um, pirated the uh, first episode, liked what I saw, so I decided that I would just get my hands on everything um, Voltron related, and even though I've only watched this show, I'm definitely looking forward to continuing with this franchise. So, what did I um, think of it? Um, I was actually surprised at how much um, continuity there was in the show, although there's one thing that kind of um, contradicts what I just said, which I'll get to later. But like, um, how the show started out with Keith and his pal pals all getting kidnapped by Zarkon's forces, them escaping Planet Doom, hearing a little bit about the Legend of Voltron, getting back to Planet Eris, meeting Princess Allura and Koran, learning exactly where the lions are, getting the lions, learning how to form Voltron, and that's the only way they can tackle most of the uh, row beasts that Zarkon sends their way. Sven getting, um... Severely injured, then later kidnapped off camera. And then a Malura replacing him, adding a new dynamic to the uh, group. The introduction of Nana and the uh, mice, who, rather than just being a one off gig to help them find where Allura's father was buried, um, they actually matter in a decent amount of episodes for one reason or another, and then they actually have a couple plot lines in one or two episodes. Nice job there. Then the adding the Prince Low Tor to um, give the Voltron Force even more difficulties, and then that other planet that had Alora's cousin, then that kid general, for uh, lack of a better way to describe him, can't remember his name. And then just going up to Zonkon, Lotor, and Hagar again and again and again. And then uh, finding Sven and all that stuff. Um, I'm really impressed with just how much that they were able to put in there. Although, um, given how the creators of the show and the special features said they tried to follow the original story as closely as possible, so I admire them for that, because given what they had to do, eliminate all the uh, death scenes, eliminate everything that uh, that made the show clearly Japanese-ish, even though now <laughs> they state that you want to do exactly the opposite if it's based off a Japanese show, make it clear that it's based off a Japanese show. <laughs> And then, um, definitely restructure plot lines, cause, you know, Sven getting injured and then later kidnapped. We never knew that he was kidnapped, he just all of a sudden shows up on Planet Doom, and that music that's in the background when he gets injured and then the sword falls over? Hello? Come on! Right. Okay, so, yeah, I do think it's a good um, uh, product there, and I also do like how some episodes were um, really creative, because the vast majority of this show is um, the guys combating um, Zarkon's robo-beasts, all the infiltrators on Planet Eris, but there's a couple times that they do go off the planet, mostly to help out Allura's cousin, and then towards the end where they're rescuing Sven, and um, going after Planet Doom officially in the last couple of episodes of the original run, but, you know, there's a couple different ones, such as where they go to Pidge's home planet... And, um, then there's an episode where they're fighting a rogue beast, but then they have to do the exact opposite of what they normally do, and can only defeat it when there are five different lions. And then, once you get past the original 52 run, 
they actually start visiting a lot more planets and dealing with a couple things that haven't been addressed before, such as what about the people that um, are affected by all the damage afterwards, or don't entirely view Planet Eris as officials in a totally favorable light. That's something that this show hasn't done. Although, granted, that does kind of take it out of the, um, slightly out of the 410-year-old uh, demographic, because, um, they do a couple of weird things with, um, exactly who, um, demograph what demographic this show is meant for, because, okay, they censor a lot of the deaths, all the deaths that they have to put in there, they just say, yeah, we're gonna get you help, don't worry, and then we never see that character again, huh? But after that, they don't censor some of the risque stuff, like when Laura is trying to demonstrate to the guys how to properly dive into the lake, and then she loses her bra, and then where Pidge goes under Nanny's skirt, chasing after the mice? What? So that's weird, and then also starting in, like, episode 30, they start throwing in a couple of, um, odd puns that ten-year-olds wouldn't be able to get, like, um, the episode where Lotor captures most of the Voltron Force, but Lance has his lion camouflaged, and then he gets this huge birthday cake that explodes, and then he goes, huh, you should've got me devil's food cake. What? Ten-year-olds aren't gonna be able to figure that out, well, most of them. Right, so, it's kind of odd that little situation, though it is interesting to see a show where the deaths are censored, but the risque stuff isn't. Usually it's the other way around, right? Okay, um... Other things to mention here, um... Okay, so I think I alluded to earlier that there was one big thing that I wanted to mention, even though I said that this show has some good continuity to it. And that big thing is that not to once you get past the first couple of episodes that have Lotor, and up until they rescue Sven, so that's like 20 plus episodes of the show at least, it degenerates into a mostly predictable formula where Zarkon, Hagger, and company simply try to get a new Robies that will be better than before, send them after Voltron, they form the Lions, using the same clips of them racing to the Lions, form feet, arms, and body, and I'll form the head, like that happens over and over again, although I know they did mix it up one time where Allura was the Black Lion. And then also Lotor, um, going from being the main bad guy that we should all fear about to constantly going after a Laura. Well, it was good for a bit of the show, but to keep it going for 40 plus episodes and just him not being able to get over himself? Sheesh. I mean, like, he did. There were a couple of episodes where other love interests were suggested, although, of course, he's not interested, and half the time, they aren't either for the correct reasons, but... You know, it got into a somewhat predictable formula, but then again... Isn't that what the original Scooby-Doo -Doo shows do? Except, sometimes the bad guy is someone that we were introduced to earlier in the episode, and other times it's out of the blue. Completely, yeah. Hmm. So I want to um, point that out. Now, that's not to say that it isn't enjoyable, because as I said, they did try to throw in a couple of other things in there to make it interesting, and I applaud them for that, especially coming up with those 20 more episodes of the show. And let's talk about those additional 20 episodes, actually. How do I feel about them? Um... Originally, I wasn't thinking that I was going to like them, especially since the animation quality was noticeably subpar, but apparently that's because the uh, company that originally made um, Go Lion, 
They didn't actually make those, um, drawings themselves. They, like, sub-licensed the show to another company who made it and then sent it back to them, who then sent it back to the, um, American people. Um, as I said, I didn't think I'd like it at first, but then I noticed how Peter Cullen's narrations were trying to, um, introduce a sometimes subtle, sometimes not as subtle theme for each episode, and that was actually a nice touch, and as I said, uh, well, alluded to, those 20 episodes had a few episodes that deviated from the formula and mattered more, like the episode where, um, with the jungle woman and how her father is turned into a big creature that keeps growing based on a certain trigger... Yeah, I didn't totally, um, get, um, the impact that that episode was meant for me to, um, have, partially because, you know, I hadn't recovered from the monotonous of a lot of the episodes between, like, say, 25 and, uh, 44, something like that, but... You know, that's a good touch, and that would definitely impact quite a few people, and I kind of wish that we had a narration like that for most of the other, um, episodes. Because I think that that might have helped a little bit, but then again, if it really, if when I watch the original show, which I'm not going to do until I'm done with everything Voltron proper, if the original formula for that show is a lot like what I saw here, then there's not that much that they could have done about that. So, if that's the case, then I can't fault them for that. Although, um, I will kind of fault them for... ...not doing a good job of explaining that Sven was kidnapped, and then having him just suddenly show up on Planet Do. I mean, like, they could have created a couple of original, um, shots to help, um... ...explain that, because I'm reasonably positive that a couple of those purple characters that they were showing in episodes 50, 51, 52... ...I wouldn't be too surprised if those are from Dire Rugger, because... ...I don't know, they just look totally different. And, of course, if you really know your Voltron stuff, you would know that Girl, Lion, and Dire Rugger aren't related, and given how... ...the, um... Last 20, if I recall correctly, actually aired after Vehicle Force, and yet never referenced Vehicle Force. I think that tells you something. Like, all of a sudden, them ramming the fact that there's other Voltron Forces right at the end of Episode 52, which, by the way, carried a much better finale vibe than Episode 72, even though... Uh, the message that they're trying to send in this cartoon is that the fight never truly ends with Zarkon. And I had, like, a good example of another situation that was just like this, but I can't remember what it is now. Shoot. Oh, well. But. Right. So, I know that I've kind of gone backward and forward between me complaining about this show and then pointing out things that I like about this, but... Do I regret, um... This? No, I don't think so. And I'm sure that when I rewatch it, I wouldn't be too surprised if I actually have a lot more fun... Uh, ...doing it. Especially when I'll have something to, um, compare it to. So I can say that the strengths worked better in this versus other... ...shows that kind of, um... Thing. And, um, I highly do recommend you try and find the original, um, releases of this movie, because this is one of the ways you get the original, um, discs for this show. Like, the extras packages that are on here, they're not ah and everything like that, but it's nice to, um, see that kind of st the stuff here, because, um, uh, hold on a sec here. You get, um, stuff where they just, where the composer describes his thoughts about the music. Sure, it's only for like eight minutes, but he gets a good amount of stuff done in those eight minutes. And then, um, 
interviews with the voice actors and how a couple of their roles came to be. That's really nice. The creators demonstrating how big of an impact the show had, although they don't give too much in the terms of figures, how somewhat stressful the production was because they really had to churn out a lot of episodes. Um, uh, they get a skit from Robot Chicken that's about Voltron. I actually really enjoyed that, although um, I could have done without the random other bits that they included in the, from a show that didn't have anything to do with Voltron, like what's up with that? And, um, right, so, it's a good extras package, you definitely should check it out, check it out, oh, I'll, oh, and of course, if you're wondering why I got, um, this release, instead of the, uh, tins, especially when the discs on, um, these are stacked on top of each other, well, I figured that these would be better to put on and take off of a shelf instead of the tins, because the tins would, you know, be sliding against each other, and they're slightly taller than typical DVD cases, but of course, so that's why I chose this, even though it was slightly more expensive once I purchased different cases, because if you look closely, you can tell that the artwork doesn't actually, um, fit all the way. Well, that's because... Come on. Managing this with one hand is a lot more difficult than it seems. <clears throat> yeah, I got fresh cases for these where, they di where the discs aren't on top of each other. So, uh, there you go. Alright, so I think that um, about wraps up this review for... Um, La Hien Force. I don't think the uh, rest of the reviews are going to be as long as this, but I've shot myself in the foot for that multiple times before, so what do I know, right? <laughs> Alright, on to Vehicle Force.